The Bible tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says to receive with meekness the implanted Word, which is able to save your souls, and to be diligent to present yourself approved to God, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Join us now for the 3ABN Sabbath School panel. Our study today is Salvation by Faith Alone. The Book of Romans. Welcome. We welcome you to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. You know, this is a lesson that we don't want you to miss. So I'm going to invite you to get your pencil and paper, get your Bible. You know, check us out. We need to be checked out to find out whether these things be so. There's such exciting uh, lessons that we're going through here. Uh, I'll introduce the panel in just a moment. But uh, each one of them that I talk to personally have really just enjoyed these messages. And it's, it's, it's a reminder. We're learning new things. And also I'm being reminded of things that we've maybe read before. And it's really joyous to see how it all comes and fits together. So we're so glad you've joined us. Some of you may not have the lessons, and so you'll, you'll want to get those lessons, and you can join us here on the, I can download these things. I think it's an interesting thing that you can download these lesson study guides. I always say the, the adult ones now, so we're talking about the adult Sabbath school uh, lesson here, absg.adventist. Dot org. And if you download those, that way you can study along with us. You can see the questions. Also, a lot of passages are written there. And that way you can study to show yourself approved unto God. So uh, we approve of you, and we're glad that you joined in with us. And some of you might, you know, some say, they've told me this. Sometime I stay home and I watch this. So I know some of the pastors say, oh, oh, shame, shame. But, you know, you can also, you could, you could set your DVR or something, couldn't you, and record it and Absolutely. so on. But anyway, these are lessons that we need to be going over, so we're thankful you've joined us. I'm going to ask right now, uh, before we have prayer, I'm going to ask Brother C.A. to have it, but I just want to introduce the panel. And Sister Molly Stinson, we're sure glad you're here. You're just Johnny on the spot all the time, and we're very grateful and thankful for you. Joy to be here. And next to her is C.A. Murray, Pastor C.A. You know, how awesome. We've just always enjoyed working with you from day one. Make your acquaintance and then just, I just love you and appreciate you very much. Thank you for your friendship and for your prayers. And uh, just every time somebody needs something, it seems like he says, I'll do it. And that's such a good spirit. Thank you, brother. Good to be here. And right next to you. We have uh, Shelly Quinn. Shelly, bless your heart. You love the Word of God and you've not been feeling the best but you know what? You're, you're putting it forth, right? And you're, you're, by God's grace, He's going to touch you and do something special for you. Well, salvation by faith alone is in the book of Romans. It's one of my favorite topics. So I had to be here no matter how yeah. I was feeling. Isn't that beautiful? And next to you, you know, <laughs> it's, it's good to have this Sister Jill Marconi. Uh, you just have all kind of hats. You just wear so many. I can't keep <laughs> tabs of them. But it's, it's so good that you're willing to do it. You do it with a smile. And you do it with the love of Jesus in your heart. And you make us all feel welcome and uh, uh, feel loved and we appreciate you today. It's a blessing being here. Good. Praise the Lord. We're going to be talking about in our lesson there, and if those of you who have it, we're going to be talking about two, uh, it, there's two names that just pop out and that's just our lesson, Adam and Jesus. <laughs> and I just, there's something about that when you say Adam and Jesus that I start getting actually little goosebumps <laughs> because I'm thinking about a reunion day that I read about and I, and for a lot of reasons, I say, you know, I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss the coming of Jesus. We want to be there, but I don't want to miss that reunion when they get together. And I'll read a quote in just a moment as we just kind of open with this, and then we'll go Sabbath afternoon, our memory text. We're going to be going through Romans chapter 5, and uh, some of the stuff we'll be going over again, but you know how wonderful it is. We're learning from that. The memory text. It's found in Romans chapter 5, 1 and 2. These are powerful verses, so be sure you underline some of these things. Therefore, being justified by faith, notice this, and then we're going to have prayer after this. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access of faith and to hit this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope and glory of God. Isn't that Amen. just wonderful passage. Amen. Say, would you just pray that God will help us to understand this and ears and hearts and minds will be open to receive. Father God, truly, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Yes. We know and understand that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. So would you be pleased, your Father, now to give us your spirit, yes. that we may speak your words, that we may understand, and that we may be true to the text, mm -hmm. and that those who hear 
what do we have to say will be blessed and encouraged that we may, we may all learn together mm -hmm. of your love, of your goodness, of your grace and your salvation. And we thank you, dear Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, I <clears throat> thought about this lesson quite, quite a bit and was going over it. <clears throat> about Paul, for instance, when he talks about the first part of our lesson, he's established the point of justification is you know, the only avenue we have, acceptance with God. That's just been so plain, so clear, so wonderful. So a lot of us trying to work our way and do so many different things. We can just let those things go, go by and just concentrate on getting, I like to say getting our lives right with God. And I'm sure that you're working on that too, as long as I'm working on it. Um, a paragraph that I thought was very interesting in our lesson. It said, through the fall of one man, through the fall mm -hmm. of man. Who was that? Adam. Adam. That was certainly Adam. And it said, all humanity then faced, we see it, condemnation, alienation, and, and, and death. Mm -hmm. So the death decreased. So by one man, death came upon all. But praise God, there's a passage that continues on there. Isn't it what in 1 Corinthians? What happens? You remember? Even so in Christ. Even all. so in Christ shall all, all. I noticed that word. I even circle it again and renew it. All shall be made alive. So, you know, all that wants to be, all that's willing to accept that. And I thought how wonderful. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 45, I like it because it talks about the first Adam. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on and it says the last Adam. So we're talking about two different Adams, as it were. We come up about the first, and you're talking about the last Adam. Bottom line to me. Read this in several different places, and you can jot those down. Great controversy. Uh, it's uh, 647, uh, one testimony 659, and Adventist Home, page 540. You read this quote. This is what this gives me goosebumps, and I don't know if it will for you or not. And I long for that day, and I, I want to see that day. And this has given me so much hope, and so much encouragement over the years, because I look at Adam and Eve. Because they fell short, they made a wrong choice. All this, may I say mess, mess of this world, you see, it's, everything out here is due to the sin, you see. And yet, what does Jesus do, you see? We confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. This is part mm -hmm. of justification by faith. How can a God in heaven who has seen it all, all the misery, all the disease, every sickness, everything, still yet look at the ones who started it, as it were, by their choice, and look at him and welcome him into the portals of glory with open arms. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that to you just quickly here as we go on. Notice, uh, I thought that was interesting. It says the two Adams. I think this might this would be the great controversy, 647. It says the two Adams are about to meet. All of a sudden I'm getting excited. The two Adams mm -hmm. are just about ready to meet. It's like it's something that sets, it's something that is, it's, it's, it's a special thing when we get to heaven. And, and the angels are interested in it. The redeemed are in, they're interested in this oh, yeah. because it's like it's set up that the two Adams now are getting ready to meet. The Son of God is standing, notice this, with outstretched arms to receive the Father of our race. The being whom he created, who sinned against his maker, for those, notice it, whose sin, the marks of the crucifixion are born upon the Savior's form. Mm -hmm. He has these marks on him, the crucifixion, and he looks at the one who fell short, the first, the first Adam, and he reaches out. Jesus, King of Kings, mm -hmm. reaches out and embraces him and is so happy as he's in the kingdom of God. Amen. If that does not give you hope and encouragement, if you Amen. think your life is so bad, mm -hmm. you think that the grace is not sufficient enough, you can, can't be justified by the blood lamb, think about this reunion. And I know it's going to happen, and I want to see that reunion. I really do. But you know, Adam doesn't just have the embrace. He falls on his face before Jesus Christ. How awesome that's going to be, same, mm -hmm. same as us. Anyway, good food for thought. First part of the lesson here, just, uh, we'll uh, hit as fast as we can here as time is running down. Sunday, justified by faith. I love justified by faith. Now, that's a subject you can talk on and on and on about. I'd like to start uh, from a book that I, I really like. is the Acts of the Apostle. Just a quote here, page 531. 
Again, when you're talking about justified, do we really mean it? Do we really believe in being that we're really justified by faith? Do we, do we really believe that our record is set right? Do we really believe that we've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb when we say justified by faith? And, and then where does that set us up? Does that set us up to, to live a life that's pleasing in the sight of God when we're justified? Notice what this says right here. It says the Savior showed that through cooperation with, again, divinity and Humanity. humanity. This is, is that supposed to work with us? Mm -hmm. it, has to, it has to be. We can't do anything on our own. Divinity working with humanity just like Christ. Notice this. This is God's assurance to us that we too may obtain complete victory. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because mm -hmm. Christ did it. Amen. He had nothing that we can't have. Divinity and humanity working together, it's our assurance. Great Controversy 623 says, It is in this life. I've had people just, you know, really want to fuss and really want to carry on. I don't mind discussing sometimes, you know, this life that we are to separate sin from us. So where at? No. Where is no. sin separated? No. People tell we're going to continue sin until Jesus comes. If we're talking about justif justification, justified, you know, by faith, what does that really mean? We must not think it means cleanse from sin, evidently, if we don't think that we can gain victory here. Mm. But you see, he said, notice this, it is in this life that we are to separate sin from us. Now, how is that accomplished? Through faith in the atoning blood of Christ. Yes. Same thing our lesson everyone's been saying right here. There's only one way in which it can yeah. be done. Mm -hmm. But we are to separate from sin. We can't dilly-dally around with it, see how close we can get to it, reach out and touch it, reach out and think we can just do this and we're going to get away with it. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. This right here, this in this life, that we are to separate from sin. And only by the blood of Jesus Christ, it gives us the power to do that. In Romans chapter 5, uh, 1 through 5, it's, just, it's absolutely powerful. I don't know why I have time to read it, but I'm going to try it anyway because <laughs> I, I'm seeing three things. I like to say, uh, I, I noticed I put on my notes, three free gifts. I'm throwing three. You can realize all the hundreds and thousands of free <laughs> gifts that heaven yes. bestows upon us every day. So I have to say three wonderful free gifts that he gives us. So, But notice what it says here in Romans chapter 5. It says, therefore, being justified by Faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom we all we are have access by faith mm -hmm. unto the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in the tribulations, and look out now also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, mm -hmm. patience, experience, and experience hope, verse 5, the hope that maketh not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. What an unspeakable gift to give us the Holy Spirit, to impart Amen. the Holy Spirit Amen. to us, knowing us as heaven knows us, still willing to impart that gift to us, being justified. This is interesting. What is Paul doing? The question in our lesson comes back. As you read these passages, what does it really mean to you? So I jotted a few things down. I said, just at least for me, this is what it talks about. Paul shows that all men, Jews and Gentiles alike, sinners are under condemnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right quick, he says it. And need of what? Righteousness. This need cannot be met by any kind of a legalistic attitude or means that we might think. Nothing legal. We, it can't be met by that or by works. Only by the grace of Jesus Christ and by the gospel. Now, the three free little gifts here is what we've been talking about in our lessons. It's simply, it's simply this. God offers what? Number one, free gift is grace. We know that. Praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Number two, what does he offer? He offers something else to every one of us is complete pardon. I think that's where I'm coming from in a, in a lot of, I don't say my studies, if you allow it to do it. Everyone has their own studies and, and we come to certain things and I really want to come to what is, bottom line, is what is, is the truth. I don't want to have any preconceived ideas and, mm -hmm. and try to make it say something it doesn't yeah. say or because this group believes this or that group. I stayed away from, tried to stay away from groups. I started to get to the Word of God and Spirit of Prophecy. But, you know, we, we need the counsel. We realize a complete pardon, it either is or it isn't. And number three, this, as I like, is reconciliation. Mm, like reconciliation. That, yes. What good, may I ask this to anyone here, what good is the gift of grace if there's no reconciliation? Absolutely. What is uh, the complete pardon if there's not reconciliation? If I'm not brought back into the state that where God wants me to be, what good is all the rest of it? Yes. See, this is part of the plan of salvation, in my, in my opinion, in, in reading this here. 
He wants to put us back like we were before sin. And that must take place before he, he comes. And that's an awesome thing because I look in the mirror and say, oh God, have mercy on me. You know, and that, to me, that's not always bad because it drives me to the Savior. Mm -hmm. I don't take it as some might take it and say, oh, my lands is useless, is hopeless, I'm depressed, I'm out. No. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. I need some help. I, I need you to come in being mm -hmm. justified. Praise God. And then, of course, well, time's up here, but, but Paul begins to give, and some of you will bring this out, some of the benefits mm. of following the counsel that he gives. Following God, do you realize if some of you like it, there's benefits. And you know what? I kind of like some benefits here. I like to say that heaven can be my home. Amen. I like to be able to think that his blood cleanses me from all unrighteous. Yeah. I, like to, I like to think my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You see, Amen. and I believe that by faith, and you believe it by faith, it's so. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, you know, these are lessons that all this stuff needs to be brought out in time to it, Sister Molly. Yeah. Help us with the next part, please. Well, something you said, Kenny, I, I appreciated the way you put this. You talked about the first Adam mm -hmm. and you talked about the last Adam. You know, sometimes I hear people say the first Adam and the second, second Adam. Yeah. That always concerns me mm -hmm. because if there's a second Adam, what does that say? Yeah. There might be a third Adam. Yeah. No, there's never going to be another <laughs> Adam. There was the first Adam right. and there's that's the last, last Adam. And that's exactly Thank what you said, and I just appreciated that. Well, I've got Monday, and we're looking at while yet sinners. How many of you appreciate that while you were yet a sinner, Ooh, amen, Lord. God died for us. Christ <laughs> was crucified on the, on the cross. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this. Uh, Romans 5 verses 6 through 8 are the two uh, scriptures, are the scriptures that I'm going to cover, mm -hmm. uh, the three. For when we were still without strength oh in due time, mm -hmm. Christ died for the ungodly. He died for who? Ungodly. The ungodly. Amen. He didn't die. He wouldn't have needed to die if all there was was godly people. Mm -hmm. He died for us who were ungodly. Yes. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Wow. But God demonstrated his own love toward us mm -hmm. in that while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Wow. Amen. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, in the opening moments of Earth's history, in the opening moments mm -hmm. of mankind's existence Mercy. on this earth, Adam and Eve shamefully and inexcusably transgress mm. the divine requirement. It's called the fall. And how did that affect us? Did oh. that affect us? Oh, did the fall yeah. of Adam and Eve affect oh, us? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yes, world. All mankind I say it like this, well, we fell down and we had absolutely no way of no getting way. back up. Mm -mm. Visualize that for yourself. I'm not into visualization. You ever <laughs> fallen down and you couldn't get back up? There was no hope mm -hmm. but Jesus. Amen. Amen. Without outside help, we had no hope. Mm -hmm. Pastor C.A., we've got hope. Amen. <laughs> God, see, we were separated from God. There, and it was an irreconcilable separation. You know, divorces, sometimes they have irreconcilable differences. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. no, hope. no hope. We were irreconcilably separated mm -hmm. from God. But, don't you love the buts? Yeah. <laughs> God took the first yeah. step. God took the first step. Yeah. See, That's we right. couldn't take the first no. step. Why couldn't we take the first yeah. step? Because no. we were, had fallen down in the quagmire of sin mm -hmm. and we couldn't get up. God took the first step toward reconciliation. That which was irreconcilable, only God could reconcile. That's right. He initiated a way to salvation, mm -hmm. a way to reconciliation. And ever since, ever since, God has been the initiator in inviting men and women to accept the way he provided. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you ever seen the picture of this big 
building and Jesus is on the outside, what's he doing? Knock. He's knocking, knocking mm. on every one of our hearts. And I hope that our viewing audience and our listening audience are full of people today that have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of well, their life. Yeah. Because today is your day of salvation. Right. Mm. Jesus is on the outside of your heart right now, knocking on your heart saying, let me come in. You've fallen and I can help you get yeah, up. Yeah, I am the way that God initiated for you to come up, come up and out of that quagmire yeah. of sin. Mm. Now, when he knocks, mm. when he extends his hand to every one of us to help us stand back up, we can do one of two things, can't we, Pastor? Yes, King? we can. One of two things. Accept that hand or not accept that hand. Mm. Let's look at the contrast. Without reconciliation, without our standing back up, mm. we fall under the penalty mm. of sin. That's true. Now, what's the penalty of sin? Death. Death. That would be Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is? Death. Okay, now let's contrast that. We can do one of two things. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we're in a sinful state. One of two things when he knocks at our heart, when he offers that hand of reconciliation, we can take that hand or we cannot. So if mm -hmm. we don't, mm -hmm. the wages of sin is death, death because we just fall under the penalty of sin if we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm. But if we accept his hand, mm. if we accept that way of reconciliation that God made available to us, the gift of God is eternal, eternal life. life. Hey, that's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. How many of you want to live forever? Mm -hmm. How many of you want that eternal life? Mm -hmm. To spend yes. an eternity Mercy. in the very presence of God. You know, Kenny, you mm -hmm. hit on that so soundly mm -hmm. that, it, that we need to take seriously the time and the age oh, that we're living in right. and the time that we have left here on this earth. Right. Some of us are so short-sighted, mm -hmm. we lose sight of the fact that this is all there is. Mm -hmm. For us, is this side of eternity. Mercy. And if what is the only thing we can take out of etern out with us into eternity? Our care. Our care. Our care. You see, if you don't uh, purify and perfect your character, and you can only do it through the blood of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ and through His help, then this is all there is for you. Well. But for you that have higher aspirations, this isn't all there is. That's right. That's right. There is an eternity in the very presence of Almighty God. While you were yet a sinner, He died for you. He made reconciliation for you. Yes. He made a way for those who had no other way. Right. He would mm. take your hand, lift you up, and then that, see, God will accept you just like you. You ever heard anybody say, You'll just have to take me like I am. God will take you just like you are. He will take you just like you are, mm -hmm. but uh, he will <laughs> accept you just like you are. Mm -hmm. But for you to be able to spend an eternity in the presence yeah. of God, yes. there is this thing called sanctification, mm -hmm. this thing <laughs> called being purified and perfected. God, see, the, the number one purpose of the Holy Spirit is to draw you to Jesus Christ, yeah. to pick mm -hmm. you up out of that sinful condition you're mm -hmm. in, and mm -hmm. to draw you into right relationship relationship with Amen. God. And once you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you come out of darkness and into life. You know what the number one purpose of the Holy Spirit is then? Your sanctification to lead you into coming out of darkness in every area and relationship Amen. of your life. I get so far off of my lesson. Oh, Let's good. look here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then in Romans Amen. 5, 9, Paul says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Mm -hmm. So what if you haven't been justified by his blood? Are you saved from wrath? No. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the Exodus. And I think I've got like two minutes to talk about the Exodus. The blood of the sacrificial lamb played a very significant role the night before the children of Israel, of uh, the children uh, left Israel, left Egypt. I'm sorry, the children of Israel left Israel. 
Egypt. The Israelites were instructed to do something. They were instructed to take the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and apply it to the doorposts and the lentils of their homes. Each home had a lamb, and it was each home's responsibility to obey. If they didn't, something was going to happen. What was going to pass over that night? Yeah, death the angel. death angel was going to pass over all the houses in Egypt, mm -hmm. and God made a way, told them, if the blood of the lamb, take that blood, apply it to the doorpost and the lentils of your homes, and when the death angel passes over, then your firstborn will not be affected. But if you don't have the blood applied, then what is going to happen? The death angel is going to yes. visit your house. So, I, I've got, just let me make this very clear. Mm -hmm. We're all going to have to experience that night of Passover. Mm. Mm. In, in, at some point, you know, judgment is real. Mm. The scripture says, as it is appointed unto men mm. to die once, but after that, the judgment, on that day of judgment. You know what the Passover, what the death angel is looking for? He's looking for a house that doesn't have the blood applied to it. But when you ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, mm. then the blood is applied to the doorpost and the lentils of your life. Mm. Then when the death angel passes over, he can't touch you mm. because judgment is real. There is a day when yes. you will come before the judgment seat of yeah. Christ. And, and the Lord is looking for that blood because that blood that covers you cries out mercy and there will be mercy for you. You know, when you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's as though you had never sin. Yeah. Christ yeah. died for you, died for all of us Amen. while we were yet sinners. Amen. 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 The line from blood to death and blood to life is almost a continuum. In that it was the blood that kept from death and it is that same blood that leads to our life. Um, the shed blood of Christ. Um, my lesson Tuesday is death through sin. And I want to stay a little closer to the lesson than I perhaps do sometimes because there are some points here that I want to elaborate on that, that I find are, are fascinating, very integral to, to um, Paul's argument here. Death is an enemy. I think we all can agree mm -hmm. on that. It is the ultimate enemy. Mm. Uh, when God created the human family, uh, the lesson takes pains to say that it, it was with the idea that we would live forever. It was with the idea that we would all have uninterrupted fellowship with him. Um, the lesson says with few expectations, people do not want to die. I have been around uh, people who were attempting to commit suicide. Mm. Mm. And have ministered to people who have success, who's the family of people who have been successful in their attempt. You tend to find when you deal with that enough that as a rule, people don't want to die. It's usually a call for help. They, well, they, they want help. They want yes. assistance. They've been trying to answer their own questions of life. And the Bible is, is, is very accurate when it says that we don't have the answers to our lives in our own hands. Mm -hmm. That there's a way that seems right sometimes, but it, it's not the right way, it leads, it leads to death. And when you run out of gas, mm -hmm. trying to run your own life, you tend to want to end your life. Mm -hmm. um, and so the quicker you can get Jesus inserted into that life, the better results you yeah. will have. So people don't want to end their lives. Um, death, was intended to be an unknown entity to the human family. That was never God's uh, intention for us. So we go now to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Uh, Romans chapter 5 and 12. Therefore, and I'm reading from the New King James, therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. Um, I don't want to lip over too much into to what Shell is going to bring, but Paul is describing here how we got into the mess. Can, can we say mess? Can we use sure. it? Sure. <laughs> how, how we got into yes. where we got to where we are now. And the, the reason um, I'm glad I got this particular day because I joined the church fairly early age. I gave my heart to the Lord at age nine, baptized at 10. Mm. 
Most of the issues in the, the Adventist church, as far as our doctrinal package, I had no problem with. Because you're young, you just accept it and shake it. I was not trained any other way, so this is what I've always known. The one issue that I did have a problem with, uh, even as a young person, is why am I sinful? Hmm. Why is that the default setting on my life? I, I knew even as a child there was stuff that I was leaning towards doing that I know I shouldn't be doing. You know, particularly when you get in, in hanging out with your homies, your buddies, you know, you start doing stuff, you know you shouldn't mm. be doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, why is this, this pull? Why is there this pull? And then when I read and studied and I, and I found out that death passed upon all men because of one man's sin, mm. I really rebelled against that. I didn't like that idea mm. at all. Mm. Why should I be mm -hmm. messed up because he messed up. That, even as a teenager, that really grated against my sensibilities. I'm a sinner because Adam sinned. So what's the balance? You know, what is the balance? Well, the balance, I, I think Shelley's going to talk about it. I hesitate to lip over into, into your day. Boy. But the balance is, I didn't have any part in Adam, and I didn't have any part in Jesus. Um, Adam got me in, Jesus got me out. Amen. And, and, and that's the balance, you know. Amen. One got me in, and not my fault, but one got me out, not my credit, you know. So, so it, 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 makes it, it makes it very level. Yeah, I've got problems, I've got sins, I've got this nature, but Jesus has come to rearrange all of that. If there, is, if there is a great thing um, uh, in this whole cockamamie sin 7,000 year experiment, it's that to them who believed on him, gave he the power to Amen. become. And we can, we can put uh, a colon right there. Mm. To, the power to become. Christ through his grace, through, and, and grace is, is not a, it's not a static entity. It's not just, I give you grace. It's a, it's a, it's a dynamic entity. Absolutely. It, it brings other things in its train. And, and mm. Pastor Kenny, you, you touched on this. Um, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. But if you just forgive, you haven't really helped me. In fact, you've yeah. kind of hurt me. Hmm. You just stop that, stop that, <laughs> stop. And there's never any punishment. Well, after a while, it kind of loses its, you know, it loses its sting. Um, he, he forgives me and then he cleanses, cleanses. me. Thanks. Yeah, don't, don't make me a perpetual sinner by just mm -hmm. forgiving me. You gotta put some, something's gotta change. Yeah. So he cleanses me. And, and that's, that's the wonderful thing about the justification, sanctification continuum, because I think they're on the same line. One is oh, I'm, I'm, I'm credited for being righteous, and then he gets in there and actually begins to make me righteous. Absolutely. So he, 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 he forgives me, mm -hmm. And then he cleanses me. And sometimes we all know that cleansing process can be a little rough. Yes. You know, it can be a little hard because uh, when you're sanding stuff down, sparks fly and dust flies and sand wood flies, you know. Uh, but the, 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 the um, upshot is you get this smooth surface, mm. you know, and that's what, that's what Christ wants. So going back to the lesson, um, the, the lesson says that the commentators have argued over this quite a bit. And, and I've read uh, some of this material. Um, uh, the medieval church solved it by saying that we are credited with Adam's sin, which is a doctrine that they, that they called original sin, that we are credited with Adam's sin. But when the Protestant Reformation came along, they, they rejected that. You, you, uh, your, your sins are enough to send you to hell. You don't need Adam's sin. <laughs> That's right. You know, your, you, 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 you know um, Adam had to get in just like we had to get in. You know, so your sins will, will keep you out. So, um, uh, and if, if we are credited with Adam's sin, then we wouldn't need to, to, to change our own lives because we just got to deal with Adam's sin, but we have to deal with our own sin. Yes. We've got to deal with, with what our relationship with Christ is and what it is going to become. So, um, the lesson says folk have tried to answer that question for many, many years. But the, 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 the you know, you get so excited about this stuff, you almost Ooh. lose your mind. All you know, right. da, 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 kind of thing. All, right. All have sinned. Uh -huh. right. So Adam has sinned, but so have I. Mm -hmm. God will take care of Adam, mm -hmm. and God will take care of me. Amen. Yes. And I've got to surrender myself. So I'm going to die 
because of my own unforgiven yes. sins, mm -hmm. not because of Adam's. Right. Right. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life for me and for Kenny and for Molly and for Shelley and for Jill and for everyone out there who's looking and listening because Christ died for all of us mm -hmm. right. and his blood is sufficient for each and every one of us. You know, 10 minutes is an awfully short time. It is. <laughs> <laughs> to do what you need to do. We need to recognize that we are sinners. And, and, and I think in one of the weeks past, Molly, it was you or perhaps Shelley who said um, this idea to accept that we are sinners, people think, I am not so bad. I don't rob, I don't steal, yeah. I don't kill. You know, I don't steal from the government, I pay my taxes. I, I can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to realize and understand that you have been mm -hmm. called to keep a righteous law mm -hmm. that is so far above you right. that without the indwelling of a righteous That's God, right. you don't even have a chance. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at yourself, one, for one, your, your view is parallax. You can't really see yourself as you are. It's like looking in a mirror at a fun house. You know, you may be thin, the mirror makes you fat. You may be fat, the mirror makes you thin. So you're not getting an accurate representation of who you are. But as you look through the Word of God, you see who you are. And it is that realization of who you are that drives you to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because without Jesus, you have no hope of ever becoming right. what Jesus wants you to be. So the lesson says, and it is true, we must recognize that we are sinners. And it is in the recognition that we are sinners yeah. that we are moved in the direction of Jesus because the only way to get us from sinner to saint is through Jesus Amen. and Jesus living in us. And um, that's the burden that we have. Uh, and that is the success of Christ in our lives, that we come from a sinner to a saint through the blood, through the power, yeah. through the grace, through the goodness, through the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. 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 Well done. Amen. And I love everyone's enthusiasm. Pray for me. Yeah. Uh, I've got the enthusiasm, just not the energy to deliver the enthusiasm. Um, you know, when I think about, if you think about the first Adam and the second or last Adam, both were representatives of the human race, were they not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have Adam, who was the father of the human race, and Christ, who represented all of us on the cross. So certainly what Christ came to do was to undo what the first Adam did, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So my verse for uh, Wednesday is, the lesson title is From Adam to Moses, and the verse is Romans 5, 13 and 14. So let's just unpack that as we go. He says in verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Mm. So since the fall, from the very beginning, since the fall of Adam, sin, even though we're not, a, uh, uh, even though we are not uh, accountable for the original sin, original sin had a mortal effect on earth's inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Well said. Mm -hmm. So the, but it says sin is not imputed where there is no law. The, the, law, the moral law was known in principle from the beginning of time. And you can look at Joseph. He knew that he shouldn't lay with Potiphar's wife. He said, how can I sin against my God by doing this? Mm -hmm. So Joseph knew that this was adultery. Uh, we think of Jacob and when he would, would said, okay, you got to get all of the idols out of the camp. Mm -hmm. He knew idols were wrong. Sin is the transgression of God's moral law. So the penalty for breaking it though was not really taken into account until the law of Moses. I guess you could say the physical death was, but the full penalty. So verse 14, he says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, from creation to Mount Sinai, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of mm. Adam, who is a type, Adam, who is a type of him, of Christ who was to come. So the contrast here between the first Adam and the last Adam, the first Adam was the counterpart of Christ, if you would. The last Adam is Jesus Christ. And as I said, Adam represented all of humanity just as Christ did on the cross. And because of Adam's death, 
we were plunged into physical and mm -hmm. spiritual death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all inherited not his sin, but the propensity towards sin, the tendency mm -hmm. to sin. Mm -hmm. So Paul said of Adam in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, that in Adam all die because Adam was the head of the human race and that made the race guilty and it's in and of itself. And sin does something to mar the image of God in us. Yeah. So we lost mm -hmm. our peace with God mm -hmm. when, when we had this kind of inherited guilt is what I'll say. So the last Adam, Jesus Christ, is the head of the new spiritual race. And we're all made righteous. Like I said, he came to undo what Adam did. He restores the image of God in us and he restores our peace with God. So let's continue reading. And by the way, I just have to say, it was even in the Old Testament in uh, times, it wasn't law that offered the remedy for sin. What, what offered the remedy for sin? Great. In sacrifice. the Old Testament. The Old Testament right? It was the sacrificial Sacrifice. system Blood that pointed to Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, it was grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always been the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. And I think personally, we've got it a whole lot easier <laughs> than they did to accept mm -hmm. by faith God's grace. Because the idea that slitting a lamb's throat yeah made my sins atone for. When you think about this, of course, they knew it pointed to Christ, but we actually had the evidence. I mean, they were looking forward to the promise. We look mm. back mm -hmm. to his actual coming. So now let's look at Romans 5, 21 and 22. So here he's saying that uh, we just got through saying that until the law was in the world, sin was not imputed. But in Romans 5, 20 and 21, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Mm. But where sin abounded, grace abounded right. much more. Mm. God gave the law to show us his holiness, mm -hmm. his character, his standards. And it points, it, it multiplies in, in our mind somehow, it multiplies the trespass when we have the knowledge of sin. I might, because I mean, even, I, I'm sure each one of you probably experienced this unless you're much further along than I am. But even every now and then I'll be reading something and I'll think, oh, yeah. oh my, I do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. It's not until I have the knowledge of it Come on now. That, that I'm going, mm -hmm. oh, ouch, Lord, I am disappointing you mm -hmm. here. So what, sin, what, what the law did was help us recognize yes. our sin mm -hmm. and how great a sinners we are, but it also highlights our need for grace. And that was what God yeah. wanted to do, mm -hmm. is he wanted to say, see, you can't do this by yourself, Molly yeah. Sue Steenson. You can't uh, uh. do this, Kenny. Yes. You, you can't, you've got to have my grace. Yes. And I, what I love about God is no matter how deep and wide sin is, grace is deeper, deeper. Amen. grace is wider. Absolutely. So I, I just want to take a moment and uh, I just have a couple of minutes left, but I have to say this to you. Somebody who's watching, mm -hmm. you may feel like, oh, these people, yeah, they seem happy. They're excited about this lesson because they're Christians. They didn't do what I did. Maybe you're sitting in prison mm -hmm. or maybe you have just gone through an adulterous affair and you think, mm -hmm. how can God forgive me? Maybe you're an elder of a church and you've done something like that. Let me tell you something. All you have to do is get on your knees Amen. and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> well. Lord, I, I, I'm sorry. I need you. All we have to do is confess mm -hmm. our great need of him. And he is, it's just like when the prodigal son came to his senses and returned home. The father had been watching for him praying for him mm -hmm. to come in. And the Father represents mm -hmm. Christ and, uh, the, and God. 
And the father actually broke into a run and ran out to mm -hmm. greet him, which men of the Middle East did not do. It was beneath yes. their dignity. Mm -hmm. But he was so excited that he ran and he grabbed him. And when, the, and when the son said, oh, I'm not worthy of you, Father. I've sinned against you. Just let me be a servant in your house. He said to his servants, no, bring them the robe. Bring them the ring, the signet ring, the authority, mm -hmm. the robe of righteousness. Bring him the sandals. Let me kill the fatted calf. And that's what God did. Now, I've got one more minute to get to the most important part of the, of the scripture here. He, uh, verse 21, Romans 5, 21. There's a double juxtaposition here. Hmm. And I want you to notice this. He's going to compare two totally different things twice. He said, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord. You see that double juxtaposition? There's sin and righteousness. There's, to those, there's a totally opposite. Mm -hmm. There's death and life. Mm -hmm. So yes. that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness. Mm -hmm. it's, this is the great contrast between our sin and Christ's obedience. Yes. What is the wages of sin? We've said it over and over. Yes. So, so the wages of sin is death and separation from God. Sin has reigned and separated us from our Creator. It, it, and when that came into effect, it caused our end to be a mortal one, mm -hmm. that we would die eternally. But Christ dethroned sin through His blood, through His right, His righteousness reigns instead. And death can be overcome through Christ Jesus. Amen. Eternal life is offered by Him when we become a new creation in Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much, Shelley. What Amen. a powerful study this yeah. week. Amen. To see that through Adam's sin, through what he did, uh, sin entered the world. The consequences enter the world. We live in a world of sin, but through the Lord Jesus Christ, as you said, Molly, I love that, the last Adam, we have the gift and the hope of eternal life. So praise the Lord for that. I have Thursday, which the lesson calls Jesus the second Adam, but we could call it Jesus the Last. Last, Adam. <laughs> so let's take a look. We're going to look at those verses actually that um, you just skipped here, which is my portion here. We're in Romans chapter 5, starting with verse 15. Now, as we read this, I want you to count how many times the word gift is mentioned in this passage. But the free gift is not like the offense. The free gift, God's gift of grace his death on the cross. Because of that, it's not like the offense, the fall of Adam. For if by the one man's offense, meaning by Adam's sin, many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ abounded to many. Amen. Verse 16. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned through Adam, meaning. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, meaning when Adam sinned, this whole world was brought under that condemnation mm -hmm. of the law. But the free gift mm. which came from many offenses resulted in justification Amen. because of the last Adam, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be justified. Mm. Verse 17, for if by the one man's offense, meaning Adam's sin, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace mm -hmm. and of the gift of Amen. righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Verse 18, therefore, as through one man's offense, we already mentioned that's Adam's sin, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Hmm. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. 
Now, how many times was the word gift mentioned there? Did anybody I think count? I six. Six? Mm, six. Six. Absolutely. If you look in the original Greek, it's only mentioned five times. One of them does not have that word for gift in the original Greek. Uh, Greek. But whether it's five or six, the point is it's mentioned a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And the word for gift in the Greek is two different words mentioned here. One is charisma. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And that is a gift of grace, an undeserved favor, a free gift. That's mentioned twice. And in my translation, every time it says free gift, that's translated from the original Greek charisma, meaning that gift of grace. The other times the word gift is mentioned, it's dor doria, doria, and that is a gift without repayment, a gift that is freely given. And it's interesting, every time it says, but the free gift, meaning Christ coming, his death, his substitutionary death for you and for I, we have the hope of eternal life. Now, Paul mentions it actually many different ways because I think he's trying to get his point across. He kind of says the same thing in a little different words for several times through those verses, namely that because of Adam's sin, we were all brought under the condemnation or the curse of the law, but because of the Lord Jesus Christ, the last Adam, mm -hmm. we all have the hope of eternal life and that justification. Mm -hmm. I want to look at one um, thing in verse 18 and then we'll jump over to 1 Corinthians. In verse 18 it says, therefore as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation. Even so through one man's righteous act, Amen. the free gift came to all men resulting in justification of life. Now in Deuteronomy 27, 27 and 28, we have the law of, of blessing and cursing. Remember when yes. they were on the mount and there was the law of blessing and cursing. If you do these things, blessings will attend upon you or if you disobey and don't obey uh, these curses will come upon you and they call that the Deuteronomic I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right Deuteronomic principle which is really the law in Galatians 6 as Molly always talks about the law of sowing and reaping if we sow to the flesh we will have the flesh reap corruption if we sow to the spirit we will have the spirit reap life everlasting mm -hmm. you think about the sin of Achan that's an example of one man's sin brought curse, you could say, yes. destruction upon the entire encampment of Israel when they went out to the battle of Ai. What happened? They were defeated because of one man's sin. That's an example as what happened with Adam when his sin and sin entered the whole world. Um, we won't turn there, but in Numbers 25, you have the story of uh, Baal, Pe Baal Peor when, um, remember, um, Balaam was supposed to curse Israel and instead he ended up blessing Israel so he tried to get the Midi Moabite woman to come in and to intermingle and bring in some um, uh, destruction into the camp just because of compromise, because of their association with the other nations. And at that time, Phineas stood up and he, it's kind of a gruesome story, but he actually slew someone. And because of his action in doing that, one of the people who was, who was bringing the sin into the camp, God stayed the plague that was coming against the people. So you see through one man's righteous act, a good came. Now we see obviously because of Adam's sin, those are just examples, but because of Adam's Adam's sin, we see that great condemnation that came. And because of Jesus, we have that righteousness, that hope of eternal life. Let's look at two scriptures real quickly. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15. And uh, I think Pastor Kenny and Shelley, you both reference this. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 21 and 22. For since by man came death, meaning by Adam, mm -hmm. by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And let's jump over to verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It's sown in a natural body. It's raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Now we come to the point 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. Remember when God breathed the breath of life into him, he became a living being. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, became a life-giving spirit. Adam was natural. Christ is spiritual. Adam was living, but Christ is life-giving. Amen. 
46. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, meaning Adam came first, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now, in the remaining time I have, I just want to do a contrast here. The first Adam with the last Adam. The first Adam was the ruler of creation. He was given dominion by God in the Garden of Eden over um, the creation. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, Colossians 1.15, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, author and finisher of our faith. He says, if anyone is in Christ, you are a new creation. Mm. The first Adam lost his crown and gained death. Mm. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, was crown, crowned because he tasted death for every man. He was made like his brother so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Yeah. That's from Hebrews. Amen. The first Adam, sin and death, entered the world through him. By the obedience of the last Adam, life abounds to you and to me. God breathed into Adam the breath of life. Jesus, John 20, 22, breathed on his disciples and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. As in Adam all die, we read this already, so in Christ all shall be made alive. Amen. Adam came from dust, Jesus came from heaven, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Adam was called out of hiding. Remember after sin, he went into hiding. He was called out of hiding. Jesus calls us by name. We hear his voice and we follow him, John chapter 10. We bear the likeness of the first Adam created in his likeness, but in the resurrection, we will all bear the likeness of the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There Excellent. Amen. Amen. Well done. Praise the Lord. You know, that's, again, that's how powerful this, this lesson is. There's so much to it that we could just dig and dig and dig and go over and over and still pull out some beautiful gems. So a minute and a half, so we have left right here. Quick gem, quick thought from each one of you right Right quick, if we could do that. So start right you, here. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Shelley. I just going to say what you just said tells me that all of us should. It's not like uh, the Bible is not a book that you just read from cover to cover once. Right. You can study the Bible for all of your yeah, life yeah. and still be learning more and new things. Mm -hmm. And anything as rich as the Book of Romans is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm so glad that. Christ's blood covers all sin, Adam's Amen. sin, my oh, sin, yes. and the sin of everyone who comes to him. And that's the message that is drawn again and again, again and again and again in Romans. It may be the most important message in the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Jill. Oh, I just want to make an appeal to you to make a choice to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God that he is the last Adam, that we have that hope, that opportunity of spending eternal life with him. And while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you, and now you have an opportunity to be in right relationship. Accept that last die, Adam. Yeah. Amen. You know how abounded, wonderful that is. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that just beautiful to think about right now? The appeal goes out. Jesus has his arms outstretched. Yes. He wants you in, in, in the kingdom. You know, heaven won't be the same if one of you are missing. If one is missing, it'll never mm. be the same. So let's make sure we're there. Let's make sure that we made that decision for Christ. Accept his righteousness. And I guarantee you, by his grace, we will be there. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Amen.